Well, congratulations to you. If you just picked up the Samsung Galaxy S22, this is a great phone, and I'm sure you're going to love this phone in the future. But you may be a beginner to Samsung or the S22, so let me go and show you how to use this phone. It's nothing crazy. It's a very basic phone to use, luckily. But basically on the outside, we have a beautiful 6.1-inch dynamic ML display. It's 120 hertz, and it looks very good. So that's pretty much on the front. On the left side, you don't really have anything, just this flat side now. We have some antenna bands up top. On the very top of the phone, we have a microphone, which is cool as you can see right there. On the right side of the phone, we do have our power button, which is this bottom tier little panel right here, this little like little button. We have two volume buttons. So we have the volume up button down here, up here, and the volume down button right there. So all the buttons that we'll ever interact with are going to be on the right side of the phone. We have our little, I think this is the antenna band as well down here too. Now on the bottom of the phone, we have our USB type C port, we have a speaker grill, and we also have our SIM card eject little area too, and a microphone. So we can actually go ahead and take our SIM card out. So to do this, what we want to do is within the box, there's a little you know SIM card eject tool which looks like this. Most of you may already know how this goes. You want to go ahead and find the hole that's on the right side, complete right side of the phone if you're looking at it. Basically, it's the furthest one right into the corner. And you want to go ahead and click and just pretty much press that in just like so. And what's going to happen as soon as you do that, it's going to go in and pop this little SIM card little tool out. And all you have to do is take this out, put your SIM card in just like so, and you can just go ahead and put the holes back in like you normally would, press it in firmly into place, and you've just popped in your SIM card. So that's a very basic way to do it. That's typically, you know, the best way to start off your phone experience. We do have a frosted glass back on your phone, so you may want to get a case because it can crack possibly. Our triple camera setup, microphone up there too. And that's pretty much a little tour of the outside. Now with any Samsung phone, as soon as you boot it up for the very, very first time, like right out of the box, it will prompt you to go ahead and basically set up your phone. So I will save that little boredom for you. It is a little bit of a tiny process. It's nothing crazy though. It takes like a couple of minutes possibly. And I just did mine and it took me like one second. If you have a lot of data to back up and everything, that's gonna you know prolong the process. But once you go ahead and set up all that personal information, you'll come into your lock screen. So up top, you'll have your status bar. It'll go and tell you, you know, your SIM card and your carrier, everything up here. You can also double tap the display to turn it on if you'd like. On the top right side, you can go ahead and see pretty much all your little status bar icons, your percentage, oops, your battery percentage, your Wi-Fi, the time, sound, all this good stuff is right up there. And you'll also see right here the time and date. So depending on your wallpaper, it'll actually change that up. And you'll basically be able to see your time and date and all that stuff, your wallpaper right here. And you'll also have these quick toggles down here too. So if you want to quickly get into your phone calls, you can swipe to the side and grab it, and you'll get into your phone calls. If you want to go back to your home screen, you can go ahead and swipe back and just kind of like drag the gesture on the side until you see that thing on the side of the screen. Go back, and you'll probably get into your passcode section, or you'll get into this section. So let me go and get back to the lock screen one more time. If you go ahead and grab it on the right side, you'll get into your camera, and that's pretty much it. You can go and use the camera. Now we can swipe back one more time and we can get into our home screen or if you're on the lock screen like this, you can swipe up and you'll get into the same spot. So now you're on your home screen. This is where you will be prompted to go pretty much every single time whenever you swipe up. This is your home screen. You can customize this however you want to. You can see that we have some basic stuff here. All of our applications are consistent, so they will always be here unless we go and change them up. The dock will always stay consistent down here. You can change these applications too, which we'll get into in a second. And that's basically the layout. You can always get into your Google panel if you swipe to the left side right there too. So I'd recommend taking some time and kind of scrolling through here and kind of getting used to it. You swipe between the screens like this. You can also swipe down from the top and get into your notification bar. Now what this showcases to you is all your notifications right here. So if there's anything like, you know, finish setting up your S22, upload your photos, it'll go ahead and tell you different applications and different things that are notifying you. You'll also see your quick toggles up here. So you can go ahead and see your date and time, your time up here, your status bar icon, the settings icon, which will take you straight into settings. You can see these two little options out here that say device control and media output. We'll get into those in a second. But this is where you can go ahead and if you swipe down once more, you'll see all the different toggles that are available. So you can go ahead and change your brightness down here. You can put on your flashlight if you want to by clicking that. There are a lot of different things within this panel. So I'd recommend getting used to, you know, showing how to use this for the most part. You can toggle airplane mode, your Wi-Fi settings, all these different things. And you can even swipe between those as well, which is so cool. So again, this is your notification and so again, this is your notification and you know device control options. So you can go up here and you know basically modify these quick toggles if you want to, which is so awesome. I can spend 35,000 minutes talking about this stuff. But one interesting thing is if you ever have any questions or if you want to ever want to search for anything, you can click the search button up here and it'll go ahead and allow you to search for different things. Applications, help, 
settings icons, all this other stuff. You can search for it here and type in your keyboard how you normally would, and that's it. But sometimes you may get overexhausted. You may be like, well, how do I just go back home? I have all these things open. How do I go home? Well, you can see this little gesture bar down here. The way you use your Samsung is either you can use the navigation bar buttons or you can use the gesture based button. I recommend using the gesture based button. The nav bar button is easy. You just click on the buttons and it'll take you back home. But with the home button, all you have to do is just go ahead and swipe up and you will pretty much always come home. So in this case, let's go and open up our Play Store. If we go and open it up, we, if we want to go back home, we can go and take go home just by you know swiping up like that. Now there's another thing which is our recents panel. So if we open up this right, and let's say we go back home and we open up our Google Chrome browser, well let's say you want to go back into the Play Store. You don't want to go ahead and lock this out and go here every single time, right? So to do that, what you want to do is you can go and click on the little option like here, and you can drag the little bar at the bottom that comes up between your panels. So you can go come here, and you can go come here, and you can swipe between these panels like this between all your applications, which is so cool. But let's say you're like, oh man, I, I want to go back to an app that I had like 30 apps ago. Well, it's even quicker. You can grab this little bar at the bottom, and you can kind of drag it to the side until you start seeing multiple apps. You can let go, and you will see all the applications that you have. This is your recents panel. So you'll see all the apps from, you know, whenever you open them up. And you'll also see a couple of different options. You'll see your dock down here, which will show you different apps. You'll have all your apps up here, which is sweet. And you'll see this little close all option. This will allow you to close all the applications in the background so they're not taking up any RAM. There's That's good, you know, some people like it, some people don't. But that's another thing you can do. Now let's say you want to change these apps you have in the dock or on your home screen in general. Well, first you need to understand what, where all your apps are. If you swipe up from the bottom, you will see all the applications that you have on your phone. So they don't always come on your home screen. They will most of the time be on your specific you know, app bar. So to go ahead and swipe up, you can see it starts switching and you can go and get into this panel and you'll basically be able to see all the applications you have here, which is so cool. So whenever you download them, they will come here and you can go ahead and see which ones you like. Now let's say you like you know, Samsung Pay and you wanna bring it to your home screen. To do that, all you have to do is you want to grab and hold down on the application until you get into this panel. You can wiggle this application like this, and you can drop that application wherever you want to. But let's say you don't like that application there. Well, you can go ahead and drag it down like this, and you can drag it to the side, and you can bring it into another panel like this. Well, let's say you don't want it there either. You want to drag it over, and you want to bring it into its own page. Well, you have that option. Well, let's say you don't want that application there. To do that, you just hold it down like this, and you go and click Remove. So it's going to go ahead and delete it from this page. It's not going to uninstall that app, but it's just going to delete it from that page. And that's all you have to do. But you can also do that same thing with widgets. If you want to hold down, you can remove widgets. You can also hold down on an empty space on the page. You'll get into this panel. You can go and change your wallpapers, your themes, your widgets, and get into your settings panel as well. If you ever want to go back, you can swipe to the side and drag to the side like that. You can basically come back into your home screen as well. Now, basic things that most Android people should know by now is how to make calls, texts, download apps, and everything. But for those of you who don't know, the phone call application will allow you to go ahead and make calls with people. So you can type in your contacts. You'll see your recent people you call, your contacts here too, which is so cool. Swiping back up, you'll see your messages icon. This is basically where if you're ever messaging anybody, texting people, anything like that, that will basically come here too, which is awesome. Swiping back up, you can see your Play Store application. If we go and click that, this is where you will go ahead and download any application that you want. So in this case, let's say you wanted to go ahead and download, let's just say, you know, Facebook, for example. You would go ahead and type in Facebook like this. You'll see things will start populating. You can go and click on Facebook, and you'll see this little application up here. Now, I already have that installed, but let's just use Twitter, for example. You'll see I already have this installed, too. But if you ever wanted to keep scrolling through and find an application you like, you can go and scroll through whichever one you want. Let's just take Engine Impact for example. We can go and install these applications by clicking install. It may take a little bit of time for it to install, but you can swipe up. You can also make your way over to your app drawer, and the application will be added there at some point. Now, if you ever want to delete an application and you don't like an app that you have, you can just simply just hold down on the application like this. You can click uninstall, and it'll allow you to uninstall that application. As if you want to, you click OK. If you don't want to, you click cancel. Now we can swipe up once more, come back into our home screen. Now another application that I'm going to spend pretty much the rest of the time talking about is pretty much our camera application, photos app, and settings camera, and settings app as well. So if we make our way over to our camera, this is where you can take photos and videos and everything. I can spend a th literally three hours talking about this, but it's pretty basic layout. You just go and just take photos whenever you want to. You can go and see your photos by clicking here. You can also go ahead and make your way over to the photos application as well under Google Photos or gallery for this example. You'll see all the photos that we took right here, which is so cool. So we can swipe up once more. And again, I'm moving a little too fast, but some of you may already know how to use this phone for the most part. 
Now the last application is the settings panel. So if we make our way back into our app drawer, we can click on settings up here. And this is a crazy application that hopefully most of you may know. Again, if you have any questions on anything at all, you can make your way over to your settings panel. You see that little search bar? You can click search bar and you can look for certain things. So if you're like, hey, you know, how do I update my Android? Well, you can type in update like this and it'll start showing you things. Then I'll show you, oh, you know, security updates, last update, software update. Well, software update is what I want. It'll go and click here and it'll show you exactly what to do, which is so cool. So that's one thing that is probably one of the most important things to keep in mind. If you're a new user, be comfortable going into settings and, you know, searching for settings up there. Now, up here you have your Samsung account. Connections is your Wi-Fi connections and everything, which most of you should already have set up. Sounds of vibration, notifications, display settings, wallpaper theme, just basically a bunch of, you know, home screen, lock screen theme settings that you have here, which is really, really awesome. Over here, you have your privacy settings and your location settings. So if you ever want to set up your fingerprint or, you know, face notifications or face recognition kind of stuff, you have that capability doing that here. Accounts and backup in Google, you have that type of capability. Advanced features you have under, you know, Bixby routines and Samsung Dex, which is really cool. And all these other cool things, which is over here as well. Scrolling down, we have, you know, a lot more options, your apps, general management as well. If we click here, you'll see you have the ability of changing your language, your physical keyboard that you have. If you want to connect one, you can reset your device here too, which is so cool. You can also contact them. Accessibility has a bunch of things built in as well that you can see here. Scrolling back, software update is one thing I would recommend you guys to get used to going to every once in a while and updating your Samsung as often as possible. There can be updates that have fixed certain things and you may want to go ahead and update your phone to pretty much fix that. Hopping back out, you can also go under about phone and you can also see all sorts of other information here too about your device as well. So under software information, if you ever want to see anything about your phone, you can go under here and pretty much, you know, kind of get more information about your device. Now, like I mentioned, we can swipe back up and we can pretty much get back home. Now, most of you may know this, but, you know, charging your phone and everything is at the bottom. You can reverse wireless to charge your phone as well if you want to, and wireless to charge your phone if you want. But you should now have a basic understanding of how to use your Samsung Galaxy S22, and hopefully you had a good time watching it. If you have any questions or anything, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'm sure somebody will come and actually answer those questions for you. If you have any other thoughts, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.